All right, folks, let's spend just a little more time talking about a topic that I love, and that is electrocardiography. And specifically, we're going to talk about one of the quandaries that you and I face in the emergency department all the time. When you look at a 12 lead EKG and you see ST elevation, probably the main things you're wondering, is this a, a true STEMI or is this benign early repolarization? Not a big deal. And maybe one of the other things you're thinking about is, could this be acute pericarditis? So let's talk about some ways of distinguishing. We'll start out with the case. Again, this is a real case that was sent to me by one of our former residents while she was in residency. It was a tough case. 43-year-old guy comes in complaining of chest pain, and here is the initial 12 lead ECG. And you can see that he, in the inferior leads, and especially out laterally, he's got some ST segment elevation. And the question is, well, he's 43 years old. This could be early repoll, or this could also be STEMI. Let's say there's no positional component. It's not pleuritic. It's not positional. So we're not going to worry about pericarditis at this moment. Question is, is this early repolarization or is this a STEMI? Well, the computer interpretation is, uh, is suggesting that this is a STEMI. So you could go ahead and activate the cath lab and let the cardiologist figure it out up in the cath lab, which would be totally appropriate. Or you could get a stat echo or do a POCUS yourself. If you're that good, I will admit I am not good enough to reliably distinguish between early repoll versus a STEMI. So I've just got the 12 lead ECG. Is there anything that you can look at on the 12 lead that can reliably help make that distinction? Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that have been published. And I'm going to focus your attention, first of all, on lead V6. There's one publication from a handful of years ago, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, it only, at least as far as I know, only has been applied to V6, which compared the ST elevation versus the height of the T wave in early repull versus in true STEMI. What they found is that if you look at the amount of ST elevation at the nadir or the lowest point of the ST segment, and you see that arrow, the arrow is pointing at the lowest portion of the ST segment. Take a look at how high that is. The TP segment is my isoelectric point. How much ST segment elevation is there compared to the height of the T wave, all right? If the amount of ST elevation compared to the height of the T wave is less than 25%. In other words, the ST elevation is less than one quarter of the entire height of the T wave, then that very strongly points towards early repolarization. In contrast, STEMI and, as an aside, pericarditis both tend to produce a lot more ST elevation, more than 25%. ST elevation compared to the height of the T wave. Let's put these next to each other. On the left, you can see what STEMI and pericarditis will look like in V6. On the right is early repolarization. So again, early repolarization produces just a little ST elevation compared to a big T wave, whereas STEMI and pericarditis give you a lot more ST elevation compared to just a slightly taller T wave. So that's a very nice pearl that appears to be pretty darn good and unfortunately, it only works in V6, and also, unfortunately, it only works if there is ST elevation in V6. If there's no ST elevation in V6, you're out of luck. You can't use this pearl. What else? Well, there's a few other things that are required before you're allowed to call something early repolarization. Number one, the ST elevation always has to be concave upwards. If you ever have horizontal or tombstone elevation, it can't be early repull. It's got to be a STEMI, all right? Um, also, you should never have reciprocal ST segment depression beyond AVR and V1. So you can have some ST depression in AVR and V1 in just about anything. If we got EKGs on, on me and everyone else, a lot of people have some ST depression in AVR and in V1. But if you have ST depression in any of your other 10 leads, you just ruled out early repolarization. You also just rule out pericarditis. That's got to be a STEMI. So again, you see these arrows here. Again, early repoll and pericarditis both have to be concave upwards, concave upwards. You'll notice over here also concave upwards. And early repolarization oftentimes also will give you this little fish hook. The fish hook is not a guarantee that it's early repoll. It doesn't rule out STEMI, but you can sometimes, oftentimes, have early repull uh, with that little fish hook. 
All right. And this is a little chart that summarizes a lot of the different things that we've talked about. If you compare what STEMI does to early repull, early repull and pericarditis act very similar in a few ways. STEMI often will produce reciprocal ST depression. You should never see reciprocal depression in early repull or pericarditis. STEMI can give you all kinds of morphologies to ST segment elevation. Early repull and pericarditis are only allowed to be concave upwards. If you compare the ST elevation in two and three, STEMI can be whatever it wants, but early repull and pericarditis, the ST elevation in two must be greater in, than in three. If you ever see ST elevation in three, that's greater than in two, you just ruled in STEMI. It's got to be a STEMI. And then the other thing that we all find very helpful is to get repeat EKGs, get serial EKGs. If you repeat the EKG in 15, 20, 30 minutes or so, early repolarization and pericarditis really shouldn't change, whereas STEMI oftentimes will evolve at least a little bit. ST start rising more, maybe there's new ST depression, maybe the T wave's getting taller, look for some type of changes. Now, you'll notice in the right column here, I put early repol and pericarditis together. Well, your next question probably is, well, how do I distinguish early repol from pericarditis then? And that's what this slide's all about. Look for the J wave or the fish hook to point towards early repolarization. Pericarditis, look for PR depression or TP depression, that spotic sign. We talked about lead V6, comparing the height of ST elevation to the height of that T wave. And that can be helpful as well. And finally, get old EKGs for comparison. That can be so helpful. If you get a patient with benign early repo repolarization, their old EKG from six months ago will also show early repolarization. Whereas if you have pericarditis or STEMI and you get their old EKG from six months ago, it's gonna look very different, all right? And then of course, the serial EKGs. When in doubt, get serial EKGs and look for any evolving changes. So going back to the case that we started with, is it possible this is early repol? Well, yeah, it's possible. There's concave upwards elevation. There's no reciprocal depression. Lead three ST elevation is not greater than in lead two, but there was one other very helpful feature. Take a look at lead V6. Let's blow that up and take a look at the ST elevation in V6. The amount of elevation in V6 compared to the height of the T wave is less than a quarter. And that very strongly points towards early repull and not STEMI, not pericarditis. And so that pushed us towards calling this early repolarization. And then we got some serial EKGs and the serial EKGs did not evolve, did not change. And this turned out to be early repolarization. So in this particular case, V6 really, really was helpful. So again, some key points just to sum up what we've talked about. For early repolarization, you're not allowed to have any reciprocal depression. The ST elevation should always be concave upwards. ST elevation in two should always be greater than in three. We talked about lead V6 and how helpful that can be. And also when in doubt, get prior ECGs for comparison and get serial EKGs for comparison to look for evolving changes. And hopefully these key points can help you distinguish that pesky distinction between early repol versus STEMI versus acute pericarditis. Thanks a lot.